Hey guys, in this video I want to show you how to get started with the GoPro Hero. The Hero is GoPro's entry level camera and it's a great way to get into using a GoPro and figure out how it works before you have to get into too many settings. So get your camera out and let's get started. To open the box, simply lift the tabs that are on the side here and slide this sleeve off of the main box. Then underneath here, there's another tab, you just need to peel that back and then you can slide the cover off your camera. And there's some documentation here, it's got a quick start guide and some other documentation, you can remove that. Pull this case off here, your camera's right here. Pull your camera out. And inside of this box here is the rest of the stuff that comes with your kit, so you can get all that out too. And here is everything that should have come in the kit. Here's a skeleton back door, your camera, and it's on a buckle here. And there's two adhesive mounts in here, and also a white locking plug, and a USB cable. You also need to buy a micro SD card if you haven't already. It requires a class 10 or UHS-1 card, up to 32 gigabytes max. I'm just going to begin with some basic information here. This is the waterproof housing that surrounds your camera. With all of the other GoPros, the camera actually comes out of this case. But with the Hero, it's actually a permanent part of this housing. So as long as you have this back door on, which is a solid back door here, your camera is completely waterproof, as long as you have the seal closed correctly. This here is the lens port, it's called, and it's in front of the lens. And that's the part of the camera housing that you really need to make sure stays clean, free of water drops, and free of dirt, so you can get a nice clean video or picture. And this here is called the buckle. This is a horizontal surface buckle. And this is the thumb screw that connects your camera to the buckle. The thumb screw is always used when mounting your camera to one of the mounts. However, the buckle is only used with certain mounts. Your camera comes with a partial battery charge, so you can test it out, record some videos or photos. But before you do that, you have to insert the micro SD card into your camera. To insert the micro SD card into your camera, you need to open the back door up. So lift this black tab in the front here and release it from the back door. Then you pull the back door forward this way and that will open up the back of your camera. If the buckle down here is in the way, just loosen this thumb screw, rotate the buckle out of the way, and the back door will open further. And this is the micro SD card slot. So with your micro SD card upside down with the text facing towards you, just insert it into the slot here and push it in with your thumbnail till it clicks in place. And then close the back door again by closing it all the way. Both thumbs, pull the latch over the ledge here and push it down with your fingers so that it closes securely. Next I'm going to show you how to use the buttons on your camera, scroll through some of the modes and give you a basic rundown of how the camera works. To turn your camera on, press this button here. This is the front power mode button. When you push that button, your camera will turn on straight into video mode. If you push the button again, it scrolls through the different modes. There it's in single photo mode, there it's in burst mode, time lapse mode, and the settings menu. I'm going to push it one more time to go back to video mode. To start recording a video, you push the top button here, the shutter button. Now it's recording a video. You can see the LED light flashing and the timer going. That indicates that the video is recording. Push the button again to stop recording. Now your camera display will show that you have one video recorded. Video mode is the only mode designated to taking videos. This mode here is the photo mode. This is designated to taking a single photo with the push of a shutter button. So if you push the shutter button, it'll take one photo. If you push the mode button again, it'll change to burst mode. This takes 10 photos over 2 seconds. So if you push the shutter button, it'll take 10 photos automatically over 2 seconds. This is great for action sequences and things that are happening really fast. The next mode is time lapse mode. This will take photo every half a second from when you push the shutter button until you stop pushing the shutter button. It's going to continuously take photos. You can use this for making time lapse videos or also for recording yourself in action when you can't reach your camera. A 32 gigabyte card can hold about 18,000 photos at 5 megapixels so you shouldn't have a problem running out of room. If you push the mode button again it'll take you to the settings menu. Settings menu is where you can change video resolution, set the time and date, format your card, which means erase the files, 
and turn quick capture on and a few other settings. There are only three video resolutions with the Hero, so I'm going to show you what they're for. Push the top shutter button to select and you can go into the settings menu. This is resolution. So if you push the shutter button again, it'll show you the different options. We've got 1080-30, 720s-60, and 720-60. So what that means is 1080-30 means it's recording 1080p HD video at 30 frames per second. The 720s-60 means it's recording 720p video in super view at 60 frames a second. And the other one, 720-60, is recording 720p video at 60 frames a second, but it's not using the super view setting. The 30 frames per second is great for regular speed video and it's the highest quality video you can get with this camera. The 60 frames per second resolutions are both good for slow motion. You can slow down the video two times and have good quality video. To make your selection in the settings menu, push the mode button and it'll select different options and push the top shutter button to select. You can exit out of the settings menu at any time by holding down the top shutter button and it'll take you back into video mode. On the LCD status screen here, the top icon shows what mode you're in. So it's showing a video camera, that means you're in video mode. Right here is the resolution, it says 720s-60. That's the video resolution, or if you're in photo modes, it'll show you the photo resolution, which is 5 megapixels on the Hero. This counter here shows how many videos you have recorded. Or if you're in the photo modes, it'll show you how many photos you have recorded total on your memory card. Right here are the timer. That shows how much video time is left on the memory card at the current resolution. It will change if you change the resolutions because they take different amount of memory. Or if you're in photo mode, it'll show how many photos are left on your memory card. And this indicator here is the battery life status indicator. That just shows how many bars of battery you have left. It's showing one bar here. So we're going to charge the camera in just a minute. To turn your camera off, hold down the front power mode button and your camera will turn off. To charge the battery on your Hero camera, open up the back door of your camera and grab the USB cable that came in your kit. Plug the small end of the USB cable into the USB port on your camera. Plug the other end of the USB cable into a port on a computer. And you'll see your camera will start charging. Once the battery is completely charged, this will stop moving and it'll be show a completely full battery. The battery lasts for about two and a half hours in the beginning. It's a lithium rechargeable battery and it's not removable from your camera. When your camera is connected to a computer with a USB cable and the USB mode is indicated, you should be able to access your camera's memory card. If you're using a Mac, there are some programs that block that access to this, so you might have to use image capture to import your files. The memory card usually shows up on your computer as no name or untitled. And within that folder, your files are stored in a folder called 100 GoPro. You can drag those files onto your computer, which is best to drag them onto your computer before you try to view them. The second way to transfer your files is to actually remove the micro SD card from your camera and use the adapter that came with your micro SD card. You can put this into an SD card slot on your computer and then drag the files over to your computer from there. You always want to make sure your camera's firmware that runs your camera is updated. There's two ways to update your camera's firmware and that's through GoPro's website at gopro.com support or also by connecting your camera through GoPro Studio which is GoPro's free editing software. Any updates will add extra settings or fix any glitches that were in your camera's firmware in previous releases. The Hero comes with two back doors, the standard waterproof back door and the skeleton back door. The standard waterproof back door is a solid back door, there's no openings in it. This is good for any time you're going to be in the water or in an environment where your camera could get dirty or wet. The only drawback about the waterproof back door is the audio can be muffled sometimes. So if you're in an environment where your camera is not prone to get dirty or wet, you can use this skeleton back door. The skeleton back door also allows you to have access to the USB port when it's on there. To change the back doors, you just open the back door up by lifting the tab and flipping the back door down and then you just kind of wiggle it off till it comes, this little bar comes out of the clasps down here. Just like that. And then you can put on the new back door. Make sure the white 
gasket here. This little rubber gasket is what creates the seal. So make sure that's facing the inside of the camera and then just wiggle it in place. You can take the buckle off if you want if you're having trouble doing it with it on. And then close the back door. Make sure it seals up tight by getting the complete ledge of this latch over the ledge on the back door and closing it. If you're going to be using your camera for surfing or other water sports, I highly recommend also getting a floaty back door. The GoPro cameras don't float and this back door will help your camera float when you put it on the back of your camera. The Hero comes with a few basic mounting pieces, I'm, although I'm sure you'll want to expand your mounting selection from here. But this is a curved adhesive mount with the square corners. This is a flat adhesive mount with the rounded corners. This is the white locking plug and the camera comes on the buckle with the thumb screw. The curved adhesive mount has a curved bottom here and this is mostly for mounting to helmets or any other curved surface. The flat adhesive mount is better for mounting to flat surfaces because the bottom is completely flat. So you can mount it to boards, surfboards, sometimes on your vehicle, any other area where you have a nice flat smooth surface. And this is the white locking plug. This can be used when you're using this horizontal surface buckle to secure your camera in and also to reduce vibration. For the adhesive mounts, you want to find a smooth surface that's not flexible and nice and clean. Uh, I wouldn't typically adhere it to this because it's kind of rough, but I'm going to just to show you how to use these. The adhesive mounts should be applied at room temperature, but if you're in a cold environment, you can heat up the bottom of it with a hairdryer or a lighter without touching the plastic liner, of course and then peel off the liner and that'll soften the adhesive a bit. When you're ready to adhere the mount to the surface, just remove the red liner here. Just peel it off and stick it to the surface that you're mounting it to. Give it a good push to get the adhesive tacky. And you should wait 24 hours before you put your camera into the adhesive mount. After 72 hours, the adhesive will be fully cured and you'll have a really strong mounting location for your camera. Then to mount your camera in there, you just slide these tabs in. I'll show you backwards so you can see. You slide these tabs in here and just slide it in until it clicks in place. And then you can put the white locking plug in here. It just fits in between these tabs here. And this goes over the thumb screw before you attach it. It just slides right down in there like that. And then this goes through the thumb screw, of course. The Hero is compatible with a lot of the different mounts made by GoPro and by other companies. To learn more about which mounts might be right for you, you can check out my book. Here it is on the helmet front mount. And here it is on the bobber by GoPole. This is a floating handle. And GoPro also makes a floating handle called the handler. Because your camera is permanently part of this housing and can't be replaced like the other GoPro cameras, I highly recommend getting a protective case like this one from Encase. It'll just protect your housing so it won't get as sc scratched as easily. The scratches really show up really prominently on this dark housing. I hope that helps you get started with your Hero camera. For more information and help on how to edit and share your files and use all the different mounts for GoPros, check out my books on Amazon.com.